Hello, I'm Mr Harvey. I'm head teacher at St Nicholas Junior School and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the school for it is aimed at people who are interested in applying for a place uh, probably for September 2021. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information about St Nicholas School and hopefully uh, just give you a flavour of what we're about. Um, here's a, a picture of the front of the school and it's going to be quite difficult at the moment to, uh, to, to give a full flavour. Normally we love to give uh, tours around the school to people but obviously uh, in our current situation it's not uh, a possibility. So hopefully um, this will give you a really real uh, basic understanding at least of, uh, of what there is to know about St Nicholas School. Obviously our school website contains a lot more detail. Um, you're welcome to look at that, stnicks.w-barks.sch.uk or alternatively, um, drop us an email and, uh, and we'll do our best to, to reply to you. So I just want to share, first of all, our school mission statement, which um, really sums up everything that we are at a school. So after the, the first line there, St Nicholas Church of England Junior School supports, challenges, and encourages each person to achieve their full potential in a safe, caring, Christian environment where everyone is valued and respected. That is exactly what we are about. We are about support, we are about challenge, we are about encouraging. Um, and we are a safe, caring environment. I think that's really important. Um, our school vision is love your neighbour as you love yourself. And that, that really pervades everything that we do in school. We want children to really respect themselves. That's the first thing we want everybody to do. And then we want everyone to show that, that, that respect um, for everybody else within the community. I think that's, that's such an important thing. And I think when you do come and see around St Nick's, you do actually see that. All around the school, we've got our, uh, our school logo and our uh, uh, motto, our vision all over the place. So uh, that's, uh, that's our school end. So a few basics about the school. So we, uh, we, we, our admission number is 64. Um, and the reason for that is that we know that um, there's uh, normally 60 children tend to join us or approximately 60 from St John the Evangelist School. Uh, but we also know there are other school children in our, our catchment generally who perhaps weren't able to get into St John's School. Um, so we always create a couple of extra places. This does also provide us with a little bit uh, of additional finance so that we can um, uh, perhaps provide some, some additional staff um, at different times. So, so you'll see that as I, as I explain through a little bit further. So every year group, there are two classes, um, 32 children in each. And uh, we tend to be full generally. Uh, we normally have pretty good uh, levels of support staff. So normally every class has um, at least one uh, teaching assistant that works in the classroom uh, that provides support to uh, small children, to, to individual groups, individual children, small groups of children um, at different times, English and maths and, and other skills as well. Um, all of our teaching staff um, uh, work together for, for team planning. That's really important so that we can have consistency right across the, uh, the year group. And we do also have some additional teaching staff in school as well. So for example, we have a, um, a teacher that you know, specifically delivers um, maths in years five and six, and uh, also our deputy head does the same in years three and four. Um, I'm talking outside of COVID times, by the way, because at the moment we're having to do things a little bit differently by the time your child starts uh, with us we'll be back to uh, relative normality. Um, so that means in maths that we're able to split rather than having groups of 32 we're, we're able to have groups of around about 20 children um, for each teacher which, which means that we can meet children's individual needs a little bit better. Uh, we also have um, a specific sports teacher um, who uh, takes uh, children for um, uh, sports for PE within the curriculum but also who uh, runs a variety of clubs um, and who organises all of our um, extracurricular sports as well. And um, the other thing that we, we do, we, we really um, want to meet the needs of children who've got special educational needs and so we've got um, a family school support worker who works across ours and, and several other schools, um, um, an emotional um, literacy support 
assistant who uh, runs a nurture group for us, as well as working one to one with individual children. So, so children who need that extra bit of support, it is there for them. And of course, we're, we, we want to meet children's English and maths needs as well, whatever their uh, ability level. So here's a, a typical classroom. This happens to be one of our year three classrooms at the moment. Now at the moment, because we're in uh, COVID times, you can see that uh, all of the tables uh, are facing forward, the front and everything like that. But um, we normally, children will be, be sat in uh, groups and uh, different things like that. And we're, 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 but uh, um, it just gives you a, a flavour of what one of our classrooms is. So our curriculum as a school, so it is uh, subject based um, and we teach basically every subject within the national curriculum and a, and a few others as well. So we've got uh, English, maths, science, uh, history, geography, uh, design, technology, art. Uh, we teach French, we teach RE, we teach music, we teach um, uh, computing, we teach um, uh, PSHE, although we call it SCARF, because um, uh, we follow a specific curriculum, PSHE. So it's a really wide curriculum, but we do put a large emphasis on reading, writing and maths. So every day we have guided reading in class of different sorts. It's often whole class guided reading with a particular focus on, on an individual text. Uh, we also have a, an extensive library. I think there's a picture coming up in a couple of minutes of that. Um, and there's uh, really, really good opportunities, really good books for children to borrow, to read and to enjoy reading. For our writing, we, we have a, a weekly dig write session, uh, basically where children um, write independently for 45 minutes. Um, and it really does increase children's writing ability. You can see from the time children join us in year three to the time they leave us in year six, that uh, progress that they're making in writing is huge. Um, and of course, we, we really focus in on maths as well. And we want children's uh, maths calculation skills to improve. So we put a lot of emphasis on number skills, on tables, um, number bonds, uh, all those sorts of things. But also we want children to be uh, confident in applying maths, in solving problems and things like that. So there's a lot of work done on that. We've been, we we um, are working on the, the maths, maths mastery programme, have been working on that for a while. And we follow the White Road curriculum, which enables us um, to be able to uh, um, achieve all of that. Of course, we, we, it's not all about reading, writing and maths, but those do follow through in all of our curriculum subjects. But we do have a breadth of learning. We want every child to um, experience that. And, and our topics um, for each subject enable children to, to really get a de deepness of their of learning um, within each subject. So, for example, um, our year six geography, um, uh, one of our one of our topics is all about map reading and understanding um, the, uh, you know, Europe, UK, the world, understanding how to, to read a map, to, to, to experience a map and, and to use it for, for directions as well. So there's a lot of information that we are able to include within our curriculum that is very subject specific, that really prepares children for their secondary school experience. And of course, we want to, to make sure children have rich experiences as well. So, uh, for example, doing investigations in our science curriculum um, and some of the trips we do as well. So we, we try to um, have quite a wide variety of trips that, that children are able to go on at different times. Every year group goes on, on trips for different things and um, uh, for example with, uh, with, with uh, adaptation in year six our children go to uh, the Hawk Conservancy uh, in Andover. Um, for our Stone Age experience in year three, children might maybe go to, to Stonehenge, for example. So there, there, there are all sorts of different places and experiences that we can have. And as well as that, we do two residential visits in school. So one in year five and one in year six. And the reason for these is to enable children to have the opportunity to experience um, used to being more, more embedded, developing their independence um, and their organisational skills and so on and so forth. So uh, we, we do a couple of trips. So year five, um, I have previously gone to Sheldon in Devon. This year they're going to uh, Marwell Activity Centre in Hampshire. Um, and our year six is normally go to YMCA Lakeside in the Lake District, which is an amazing experience. So lots of opportunities for children to really develop through the 
Um, there is a picture of our school library. You can see it's extremely well stocked and very attractive building to uh, um, to come to. And we also, uh, as a school, we have our learning muscles. So our learning muscles are basically the uh, the, the learning behaviours that we want to see from children. Behaviour in school is generally really really good. We want children to to develop those learning skills. So uh, don't give up. Be cooperative learning there's a few others as well they're really really important the skills that we want children to um, develop um, and behavior is really really important to us so we do have high expectations of children's behavior we expect children to behave well in school and almost all of the time they do as i've said our school motto is love your neighbor as you love yourself and, and we want children to show that in everything that they do so um, they generally, and we, we encourage them to have a pride in the school. Um, so we wear our school uniform with pride. Um, we explain to children what the, uh, the ship on it means, St Nicholas ship, um, and how um, it applies to our school. We have our own school song as well. Um, um, as a school, we like to celebrate success together. That's been quite difficult over the last few months in COVID times, but we've still managed it. We've still managed to have our, our sharing assemblies, for example, where um, we award trophies and um, certificates to children for uh, really good work um, and behaviour. Um, and we've been able to do that over Zoom, but it'd be lovely to get back together and do it as a whole school again in the near future. Um, every child is also part of a team as well, red, green, yellow or blue. They gather team points, which are announced each week. But also in those teams, we also have um, colours cups as well. So um, there's a colours football competition, for example, a colours netball competition, and our sports day as well is is run uh, within our, our our four teams, so that children have something that they are working towards. And I think that's really important for them to be able to do. Um, here's a, an example of here's uh, some of our trophies that we hand out for. Um, our sharing assemblies. So there, there are trophies for uh, each subject area, as well as a couple of uh, sort of personal achievement trophies as well. And we also have our shout out box that we uh, announce in assembly each week. So children uh, put into the shout out box shout outs that they would like um, to make. So for, for um, people who've been a particularly good friend or helped them out or um, done something particularly special for them, they put them into that shout out box and we'll announce it in an assembly once a week. About our broad curriculum, we do try and make things as broad as possible. So, um, and one of the things we want to do is to, to make sure people have broad cultural experience and also that they, they have the opportunity to be active. One of the things that we do is a, a daily mile at school. So uh, effectively that's running 10 times around our playground. But we encourage so every class, every every child goes out and they do it every day, uh, 15 minutes outside. Some children will run it, which is what we want them to do. Uh, a few children will, will walk it as well. But everyone has the opportunity to go and do that and to, to, to try and be as active as possible. And we also offer sporting opportunities in quite a wide variety of sports. Um, a very wide variety of sports through the West Berkshire uh, School Sports Partnership. Uh, we, our aim is for every child to have the opportunity to represent the school in a sporting competition at least once in year four and once in year six. A um, bit more difficult at the moment in COVID times, but in a normal situation, that is what we aim for. And most of the time, 95, 96, 97 percent of children in those year groups uh, have the opportunity to represent the school as well as children in other year groups as well. Uh, we also normally, again, run quite a wide variety of clubs, sporting clubs, art clubs um, and so on that, that, that children can take part in. Some of those are um, free clubs run by members of staff, other than them are by um, bought in people such as our, our judo club uh, and they're, they're uh, payable. And we also put quite a large emphasis on music and the arts. We do have an art club, a pottery club. Uh, we also uh, have Berkshire Maestros um, coming in, Hogan Music, uh, doing individual small group lessons uh, for children in a variety of different instruments and, and vocal. Uh, but also uh, we have uh, so instrument lessons for our year threes as well as a whole class. Uh, which children can, uh, can participate, well, do participate in, but can continue later if they choose to do so. Um, as well as that, we try to make sure that uh, we do lots of really um, 
whole you know, the whole school thing. So one of the things that we, we like to participate in and have done for probably about the last seven or eight years is um, Young Voices at the O2 Arena, which uh, basically the school goes and performs. Anyone who wants to go is able to go. Um, and we perform as part of a mass choir of 8,000 children performing to an audience of around about 22,000. It is an amazing experience and one that the children really, really, Here's our, our daily mile board and children can, uh, um, the, depending on the, how far they go over, over the course of their time with us, you can see the, the distance they're going. And last year, certainly in our year six, we had quite a few children who'd uh, travelled from Newbury to Leicester, I think just in that one year. Impressive. Um, and some of our sporting activities that we do, so as uh, bowling, gymnastics, football, uh, archery, we do tag rugby, netball, um, a wide variety of activities that children can participate in. Um, and our playground at St Nick, we're really proud of it. We've got a, um, it's no, there's no, um, no grass on it because we're, we are a town centre school, but there's um, a really extensive playground with a multi-sports pitch that uh, is only a couple of years old now. Um, and is really uh, high quality, uh, paid for uh, through some grants, but also partly through Friends of St Nick's, our, uh, our parents' association. There's a lot of space outside. One of the advantages of us not having grass is that we can use the whole of our playground area all year round. So PE, our daily mile, all take part place out there, but also, of course, our playtimes um, as well. And we're, we're, you know, we're continually um, developing our outdoor area and trying to make it as attractive as possible, as well as um, allowing it to be uh, to work really well for, for, you know, for delivering the curriculum outdoors. Here's our um, outdoor climbing uh, equipment that the children really enjoy using. Uh, um, our playground, um, you can see the green uh, multi-sport pitch in the distance behind that. Uh, we do also offer wraparound care at St Nick's, so uh, we have a breakfast club each morning, uh, so it runs from 8 till 8.45 and basically any child who wants to come to that is able to do so. Um, cost I think is £3.50, I may, be, uh, may not be quite accurate on that, but the cost will be on our school website. Um, and that is, um, as part of that, as well as childcare, children are able to have a breakfast with us as well. Um, and our after school club runs from the end of the school day until six o'clock. Um, and we have 35 places in that. So there is a bit of a waiting list um, at times. Um, so it is important to get in quite quickly um, onto that waiting list, um, which normally opens from when places are offered at the school. So um, it's a really good, really enjoyable after school club that children are able to. So um, for those children, so I'm assuming you're watching this, thinking of your child joining St Nick's. So we do a lot of transition activities to try and make sure that children are ready to join us. So we have um, uh, a buddy system, for example, where every child coming into year three is paired with some with a child who is going into year six that year um, during the course of their last term in year two, and um, that they. they than the, the, the other children's last term in year five. They have opportunities to meet together, uh, to get to know each other, and um, for the year five children to show their, their year two buddies um, all about the school. Um, and then when they join us in uh, year three, uh, those year six buddies are then there to, to, to enable them to settle in really well in that first a uh, few weeks and, and those buddies they you know children really enjoy having a buddy and, and it's a great responsibility for the year six children but also a fantastic thing for helping children to get settled we do lots of transition activities before uh, children join as well so uh, for example some of our teachers will go down to st john's to um, teach some lessons there we'll have uh, a sort of arts and sports morning at the school um, and opportunities to come and visit as well um, we try and do as much communication as we possibly can. Um, now, I'm assuming COVID probably won't be an issue at that point, but if it is, we've now got procedures in place that we use this year that will hopefully make it um, as smooth as possible for everyone that, uh, that, that comes to join us. So I'm really sorry that you haven't been able to come and visit us this year, but hopefully this has given you a bit of a flavour of the school. As I said earlier, if you have any questions, 
please feel free to uh, to email us. But do also check out our website. It's got lots of details on it, um, as well as some examples of some of our assemblies and even some of our home learning, remote learning work that took place um, during the lockdown period. So you can get some feel for what we're about. Okay. Thank you. Bye.